Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Blair Larson. I'm the Community and Economic Development Director, the City of Sweet Home. And the purpose behind this meeting is to kind of kick off the public process for our uh, downtown streetscape and parking plan. And just to fill you in on what streetscape means, it's not a word that most people use, uh, but streetscape is like, think of it like landscaping. Uh, your landscaping is your, you know, the ground around your house, plants, all the, you know, if you put a path in that kind of thing, that's all your landscaping. Well, the streetscaping is that, but for a street. So the a street has a defined area that is owned by the public. It's a public right of way and the city controls that area. And so a streetscape is what the city can do to affect downtown without buying any property and um, it's just the stuff that we take care of. So the sidewalks, the gutters, the curbs, the, the street itself, um, the lighting, signage, uh, if we ever put in any uh, public artwork, it would probably go in that street right of way. The landscaping, the trees, all of those things are what we consider a streetscape. And in a downtown, a streetscape can be very important to making people feel comfortable in that area. If you think about downtown areas that you like to visit and places where you like to spend time, they probably have some similar, some certain characteristics that, that you like to be around. Uh, maybe it's just lovely landscaping and plants and trees that, that uh, give you some nice shade. Maybe it's uh, nice benches that make it comfortable to sit, tables for you to eat at. Um, that kind of thing. Those those amenities are what we want to explore uh, improving in our downtown because we want our downtown to be a lovely place to be. We want we want it to be a destination. We want it to be a place where people feel comfortable gathering and walking and enjoying their time. And so, this the city embarked on this process to put together a plan of what improvements we need to make in our downtown streetscape that will uh, address the um, things that we're missing or the things that aren't quite right. Um, and so we have a, a, we've contracted with DLA, uh, Dory Landscape Associates, and they're here with us tonight. Uh, and they've gotten started on this project. We uh, have a defined area that we're looking at and they've, they've been hard at work kind of identifying what can be done to address the, uh, inadequacies, I guess you could say, in our downtown. And the goal of this whole project is to have a plan in place so that we can gradually make these improvements and we can have improvements that are consistent throughout the downtown so that we don't have one style of curb or landscaping in one air and one corner and then the opposite corner was done at a later time and so it's got some other kind of bench or, or style. We want everything to be kind of consistent so that we have a uh, an enjoyable place for people to gather. So um, that's kind of an introduction of why we're here. This is the very first public meeting. And so tonight, how we're going to handle this is uh, we'll have a presentation uh, by David Doherty to kind of uh, bring us up to speed on what they have developed so far. And one thing we want to make sure everybody keeps in mind these are all just ideas that we're at the, the very beginning of this. This is the idea stage. And so nothing that is presented tonight or that you see on the walls or anything, nothing is written in stone. It's only written on paper and it's only ideas that we're talking about. So we're not committed to anything that comes up tonight. Tonight is the time for to, to spur this conversation and gather feedback from the public and from the council and from the planning commission and and get all these ideas out in the open so that we can work our way through them. There will be later public meetings where more concrete proposals will be presented and then eventually we'll have a plan that the council will actually adopt and vote on and it'll be it'll be set at that point. But for now, everything is fair game. Everything's on the table and and so we're not going to shoot out anybody's ideas, but we also don't want anybody you know, going around town and saying, oh, did you see what they're going to do? It's going to be awful. No, it's going to, it's not, this is all just ideas. Uh, and so let's, uh, let's keep that in mind. But with that, um, I'll turn it over to David and then 
he'll give a presentation. I think afterward, we will have kind of an open house style thing here at City Hall where people can wander around and, and give input. And for you folks at home, obviously, you're not going to be able to do that. But stay tuned. We are going to have these same um, maps that everybody's seeing here. We are going to be able to show them to you. And you obviously can make comments here using Microsoft Teams. But we will also be continuing this conversation. We'll have some polls up on Facebook. We'll have some some uh, things you can fill out on the city website that can kind of give your input and make sure that you're heard as well. So with that, any questions before we get started? Hearing none, anybody, anybody at home have any questions at this point? Feel free to, to comment and I will try to address those as they come in. I, I hope everybody can hear and please let me know if there's any technical issues that you see with that. But. I'll go ahead and start. Okay, turn it over are to. Are we going to encourage questions as we go, or should that be left to the end? What would your so? I think during your presentation, we'd rather not have questions in the middle of your presentation. I think at the end, we can have some brief question and answer um, right there before we move on to to the wandering around portion. How's that sound? Okay. You you need to use it for the people at home. Yeah. Oh. Hello, everybody. My name is David Doherty, principal of uh, Doherty Landscape Architects. We go by DLA. Uh, we are a uh, landscape architecture design firm based in Eugene. And uh, personally for me, it's just a great pleasure to be here and reconvene with earlier efforts that, that and time spent here in Sweet Home. Really enjoy the town, really love the potential it has. Coincidentally, I was here for three days in 2003, coming up with preliminary design ideas back then. And some of those have been implemented, and that's great. Some sort of implemented, some of them weren't. Uh, but now we're going to take a fresh look. Uh, we were also involved with the uh, latest additions to the high school. Uh, what, what's that been, 10, 12 years ago? Which coincidentally contribute to the streetscape along Long Street. And then more recently, in fact, we just finished it up um, not long ago, what were the uh, improvements to the junior high school. So we're no strangers here. We enjoy being in your town and uh, appreciate this opportunity to work for you. Um, like to introduce our team. Uh, I'll be the principal in charge from DLA. Luzanne Smith here is the project manager. And then we have a couple others. Uh, uh, Somebody wasn't able to make it because of an ear infection, but that's. Uh, but we have a strong team, and we're very enthused uh, to work with you. Also, as part of our team, uh, we have a civil engineering firm, KPFF. Uh, they're listed here. They are also based in Eugene, but also have offices in Portland. Uh, their role in this is going to be feasibility of any ideas that we come up with, make sure it works with utility infrastructure and, and, and turning radiuses at streets, that kind of thing. Uh, so we're looking forward to having them involved. And then Sando Engineering, Kelly Sando is a traffic engineer, and she will be uh, working with us to make sure that, uh, you know, the, what we do to affect Long and, and uh, Main Streets is feasible as well. And she's also a specialist in parking. So she, Whoops. So she's going to be doing the uh, parking analysis and coming up with recommendations for how that might work. Uh, we knew that was going to happen just not soon. Um, so yeah, I would like to you know just reiterate what Blair was saying. Today's workshop, we're not proposing anything. We really want to engage you as the community and listen to what your ideas are, listen to what you have to say. We want you to be an active participant in this process. And you know a lot more intimate details of Sweet Home than we do. You know, we, we've really been getting to know it more and more, but you live here, you work here. And so we really want to hear from you tonight. So uh, we're looking forward to this being an interactive process. Okay. So uh, just
sculpture, street art, that type of thing, possibly murals on buildings, you know, how that might also contribute to the downtown experience. And then we learned that there is a need in town for gathering spaces. We know you have some events every year, but there could be more. So we're looking at a range of sizes, maybe a larger public plaza place. I, we would love to hear from you where you think that should be to have a large gathering place, a town square, if you will, that type of thing downtown would be great. And then also for smaller groups, um, smaller pocket parks and just places for people to get away off the main street, enjoy lunch uh, or socialize. And then uh, the parking improvements, we know how critical parking is in a community like this. And so some of the improvements, some of the opportunities would involve removing a parking space or so, so that we can get in some pedestrian amenities, but then how do we pick up those spaces elsewhere uh, so that we have a very efficient and um, a good stock of parking downtown to meet the needs. Okay. So uh, you're familiar with this. Here's the uh, existing conditions. By the way, your microphone died. I switched to a different microphone, so you don't have to hold that up anymore. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's a heavy microphone. Thank you. <clears throat> so uh, the existing conditions, you know, we, we were here on kind of a bleak day, but there's a lot of bleak days here. There's a lot of gray in town. Uh, there's a hell of a lot of asphalt. It's kind of like wall-to-wall -wall asphalt in some places. Uh, so those are all opportunities to, to, to do something about that. Um, so you're, you're familiar with that. You know, the lower right photo is, uh, you know, opportunity for a pocket park. You know, play, you know, a place like that could be a pocket park, maybe. So that's the kind of thing to think about, okay? This is the overall opportunities plan. And um, you know, while we're here, I'll point out what the boundaries of our plan are. Uh, to the east, at this point, we're looking all the way to the end where Long Street and Main come together. And uh, that's to the west. And then to the east, we're going to 15th Avenue. And then the site includes uh, you know, a block north of Main and a block south of Long Street. So that's the general scope of our study and of our work. Technically speaking, uh, the, the westernmost point where the museum is, is not part of our project, but we thought it was important to include in these early stages because it contributes and could potentially be a gateway to what we have happening downtown. So this, this is just an overall plan. And by the way, when we're done here, you can go and look at, at the plans on the walls more intimately. And, that's when you can provide some feedback. It would be very useful to us. But uh, you know, what you see here is you know, the uh, Main Street, Long Street, the North-South Streets. What was interesting to me is that this, the North-South Streets tend to skip. You go from, you go from 12th to, to um, 13th, or you go to 10th to 13th, and then you go from 13th all the way to 15th, and there's no 14th in there. So you have these long, skinny blocks, and then some of the streets are disjointed, and they're at funny angles. So there's a, you know, so, some interesting stuff going on here, but it opens up opportunities to provide connections from, the, from Main Street to Long Street without having to go all the way to an intersection. Uh, we're looking at the alleys. There's publicly owned alleys. Uh, between Main and Long that uh, could be utilized for pedestrian activity and 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 uh, potential uh, act you know that alley could be activated with outdoor cafes that type of thing you've seen that in other towns like Ben for example uh, the 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 orange color here are the existing buildings uh, the the red uh, areas are potential special opportunity sites. And so that could be anything from a park, a plaza to building infill. There's opportunities. There's a lot of missing teeth out there with buildings. It'd be great to infill some of those here and there. And then, uh, you know, there's pedestrian activities. We'll see that in more detail as, as we more move forward. 13th Avenue, by the way, between Long and Maine has been discussed previously as maybe a, a festival street. 
Um, and, and that would mean that it could be closed down from time to time and used for special events. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, something with a annual festival you have here or a block party or something like that. So there, there, that's the kind of opportunities that we're, that we're, that we're looking at here. Uh, this bottom right shows potential connections from, you know, through the parking from Main to, to Long Street as well. Okay. Uh, this is a close up where we look at things in a little bit more detail. So the beige color that you see are really the pedestrian connection areas. So the sidewalks, the alleys, and then the potential connections between Long and Main. Uh, the, the pink areas, the one up in the upper left with the cross hatches through it, we, we thought that could be either a, a, a very useful building infill site or uh, it could be a it could be a place for a you know more commercial activity. Uh, there at the corner of uh, 12th and Main, where the All Star we called it All Star Plaza. There's a coffee drive through Sunshine there. Espresso. Pardon me. Sunshine Express. Sunshine Express. Yeah, there's a sign for All Star, but All Star is on Long Street. Okay. Yeah. There's a there's a building there that says All Star on it, so I think they have some history there, maybe. But anyway, that is a prime site to do something with. That's a real catalyst site that uh, that could really contribute to the life and vitality of the streetscape downtown. Uh, there's other ideas here that you look at in more detail later, but you, you see where the, the alleys are shown with beige because they could be pedestrian connections. There could be a pocket park here between the news building and Figaro's Pizza. That would be a great place for a pocket park. Uh, there, uh, there's a small nook just to the corner of uh, the cafe there that could be an outdoor seating area. There's an opportunity along the theater to make a pedestrian connection to Long Street. Uh, you know, it's exciting how many opportunities there are. Now, some of these you'll see are on private property. And so right now we're just taking a 10,000, you know, uh, elevation look down to see what the potential is for private and public improvements and how the two might combine to, to really benefit both sectors. Um, you know, here's a Chewy's Tavern. And uh, you know, I thought, my gosh, it would be great if that fence came down and it was just opened up as an outdoor cafe that contributes to the street. You know, that's something that, you know, ownership might consider for the future, that type of thing. Um, you can see uh, street trees, and, and on Long Street, there's great opportunity for bulb outs. And, you know, those are those are the curb extensions at the corner that create a, a much safer pedestrian crossing. But they, they could also be used for trees, landscaping, furnishings, benches, bike racks, that type of thing. Because to be honest with you, the the uh, especially along Main Street, the sidewalks are narrow. They're really too narrow to really spill life out onto, but you know there are the opportunities to create these bulb outs mid block uh, or at the corners, and some are already in place, but they're underutilized. So those have great potential to to activate the the street. Uh, see anything else on here, Luzanne? I should point out. Yeah, there's a lot of little details on here. I won't go into all that, but uh, yeah, please, you'll look at these drawings more closely. Everything you see here is up on the walls. Okay. Uh, for example, you know, here's at uh, 13th and Main. I think this is in front of the fitness center. There, uh, look at the lower right picture. Uh, that's what it is now. It was a good idea to bring a bulb out there, but it's underutilized. It does not contribute to the life and vitality of the street. But the good news is it could. So there's a, you know, there's drainage issues. There's a great difference there, that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, the sketch there is just a, an opportunity of what could be done. It's a possibility create a seating nook, a small plaza, landscaping. And then you see in the, in the back, uh, in the back, the corners would be great places to integrate art. If, if the community wants to do that, when they incorporate art, the upper right is, a uh, from the city of Canby, where we, where, where they really wanted art incorporated into their streetscape, and so that's an example of what could be done. Okay. 
13th Avenue. Now, when we went to 13th Avenue and looked at it on paper and visited it, it, it is way wider than it needs to be. So there's great opportunity there to widen the sidewalks and make the street narrower. And that just provides a much better pedestrian environment. Uh, you don't lose any parking in doing that. And it uh, provides the opportunity for, for trees, for, uh, for site furnishings, uh, for that kind of thing. And 13th is really a significant link, maybe the major link between Main and Long Street. You know, ends up at the post office below. So you can see on Long Street, we're suggesting bulb outs there where there would be benches and, and landscaping and just a much safer pedestrian environment to, uh, to get to where you want to go. Uh, yeah, you can see on the photos to the left, you know, how wide and kind of bleak 13th is. And then on the right hand side, there's the opportunity of the Festival Street that we had talked about earlier where you know, that could really be a place for activities and, and really bring people together in the community. Okay. Um, more gathering space opportunities. You see, you know, the upper left picture is that, is that little opportunity for the pocket park next to the news and big rows there. Uh, the, the sketch to the right is just the idea, the concept that that could be a pocket park and uh, bring life to it. You know, take the fence down, open it up, provide access, remove the barriers, and then that could also be uh, a conduit to get people through to the parking from the alley side or eventually to Long Street. And then you, you just see some of the life that these spaces could um, facilitate. Excuse me? Yes. For a second. I don't like this not asking questions in the middle of this. There's yeah. totally no, don't no worry. There's history of that park thing there, and I know the guy that owns it. I may think it's sitting right over there, and the, there was a lot of junk and stuff that went on and, and keeping it up. That's why it's gated off right now. Oh, I, I understand. Yeah, yeah. and it, so that's kind of the way it is right now, and that's the way it may stay because of the – maybe not. I, it, you're right. It's a good spot for a little park. It is, but that's what we had before. So. All we're looking at are the possibilities, and, yeah, I know there's a reason it's fenced off because of uh, – you know, activity that goes on in there. By the way, the reason I say that is because I would have forgot about it before the end of the meeting. Oh yeah, I, 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 <laughs> no, we we know that. And in fact, a lot of a lot of what we're looking at now um, would be activated and safer. If people were invited in. You know, it's all about eyes on the street. And so, no, but I, I appreciate that, and it's good. It's good to know. Um, okay. Uh, Long Street. The width, the width of Long Street is actually wider than it needs to be to facilitate two-way traffic and parking. And so these sections here illustrate uh, you know, what Long Street is now and what it could be. Right now, the sidewalks are only about seven foot something wide, but the travel lanes are 14 feet, which is much wider than what you need for safe traffic. So, you know, the possibility is that we're suggesting here is to make the travel lanes 11 feet, which is pretty standard. Um, maybe even make the parking lanes a little bit wider. And then that allows you to make the sidewalks uh, much more gracious and generous and to the point that it accommodates outdoor activity, landscape, street trees, benches, outdoor, out, outdoor dining, that type of thing. So uh, you know, we, we think that's a great opportunity to uh, consider, but we'd like to get your feedback on it. Uh, you, you can see from the illustrations on the right, you know, those uh, widenings, the sidewalk allows, you know, this type of uh, outdoor activity, which right now would be um, too restricted. Okay. Uh, lighting opportunities. We know you have some lighting uh, down through the median strips now, but we're looking at, you know, what would, you know, how could lighting benefit the entire district? And this is, we're talking not the big gooseneck, uh, you know, Highway 20 lighting, but we're talking about more ornamental lighting, more pedestrian scale lighting that creates better illumination at ground level um, for nighttime activities. But, you know, these things can also be used uh, to support banners, bring color to the street, flower baskets, 
And uh, we have a few options here that we're just throwing out there. Uh, one, the one on the, the family of lighting you see on the left is the acorn style, more traditional. You've seen this. Uh, there's some precedent here for those style of lights. Uh, I wanted to see what you think about it. In fact, Luzanne's going to ask you to um, show us what your preferences are with some little dots later. Uh, uh, then the, the, the center uh, examples are timber. It's more of a timber theme, similar to, I don't want to say sisters because it's not sisters, but just the idea of having something that's more timber, uh, has more of a, a, a timber identity to it. And then the ones on the right, I think Blair, those are similar to ones that are in town now at one of the parks. Thank you, Park. Those are the new lights. Okay, so it's a little bit of more of a modern flair. So I think this is a really nice range of lights to consider, you know, the traditional, the timber, or the modern flair that uh, there's already in town, that already exists in town. Okay. Same thing with furnishings. Uh, you know, these really help with the streetscape, activity, vitality, benches, litter receptacles, bike racks, that type of thing. You know, that is one of the goals is to promote bicycle use in the downtown as well. So uh, th these are just some examples. Um, you know, the one on the left is, you know, timber, you know, wood kind of ties in. These could be recycled uh, materials to be a little bit uh, sustainable. Um, similar, the one in, in the second one in, the third one in is metal. There might be a preference for metal over wood. <laughs> we'd like to hear what, what you think. Uh, so, you know, this, this, you'll have an opportunity here to weigh in on, on, um, your preferences and we're not making a decision right now. We just want to know which direction to go with, uh, with what you prefer here. Okay. Oh, I guess that's uh, pretty much it for the presentation. Um, you know, these are just opportunities. There's. There's a lot of exciting opportunities here, but we really want to hear from you. And should we open up for questions now? Anybody have any thoughts? Yeah, so I think uh, we can take, I don't know that we'll be able to spend that much time, but we can take some questions before we break out and have people uh, look at the at the stuff we have posted here at City Hall. And then for you, for you folks at home, I'm going to present the images uh, over teams here that folks are seeing here. So don't worry, you'll be able to take a closer look. But yeah, let's let's get a few questions. Yeah, if there's any general questions now, and then Luzanne and I will be available to to talk about specifics uh, you know, with the drawings on the walls. So is there anything that any any uh, big uh, general questions? Um, I just have Angelita? A, yes, I just have a comment that I just want you guys to be mindful of. Highway 20 is already very narrow because of the center um, plant structures or whatever. And our town is a logging town. We have big log trucks that go through Highway 20 a lot. So I'm also a truck boss and a truck owner and a truck driver. It's so tight in there when you have those big trucks. If you're going to try to have those pop outs or try to take away some of that extra room on the side, it's going to be pretty dangerous for other rigs and mm -hmm. bicyclists. So I just want you guys to keep that in mind. But yeah, I think, thank you for bringing it up. We weren't touching the width of the main street. Okay. Because there's really not a whole lot to gain. There'd only be a couple feet to gain. We didn't think it was really worth bringing up. However, 13th Avenue and Long Street, Yes. There's really an opportunity there, but yes. I agree, not on the truck route, not it's on long. It's just well, dangerous and scary for other drivers of smaller rigs when they're driving by me or other trucks that are loaded. There's nowhere for them to go, really. So if we take away any any part of that street, yeah, well, no, we're not infringing. We wouldn't. So uh, yeah, we uh, we looked at that, but we found that there really wasn't much to gain. It's so tight. <laughs> <laughs> and um, to be honest with you, also though, when you do put in those bulb outs, it does slow traffic down. Uh, you know, it pinches the street a little bit. That's already been done. Yeah, you know, we would uh, perhaps suggest a couple other places mid block, just so we can get some furnishings in. Some of those, but it won't in interfere with the travel. It lanes. makes it hard to make those corners too when you're in a truck and you have to make deliveries and whatnot. So it's kind of 
difficult for truck traffic yeah. to make those points. And that's why we have the, the traffic engineers on the job uh, is to verify. But yeah, we weren't suggesting, if you look closely at the drawings, we're not suggesting more ball bouts on Main Street. Okay. Uh, you know, they already exist. Uh, uh, the ball bouts in, on Main Street, ODOT's already did some of that. And it actually, I was not really over in favor of that because it takes away uh, parking spaces for the businesses downtown. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my frustrations with Sisters is, yeah, Sisters look beautiful with all these fancy little ball bouts. Go ahead and try to park with Sisters. And so I'm not over a big fan mm -hmm. of it, but getting back to your point, there's no room really on Main Street for doing anything with the road itself. The street no. Itself. That's and correct. not furthermore, you really can't do anything for Main Street because you're going to have to deal with ODOT, and that's a whole different challenge. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we're just looking at conceptual ideas now. But uh, yeah, I do want to emphasize we're not messing around with the travel lanes on Main Street. Okay, so, so you're just yeah, we, talking, we, sorry, you're just talking about elongating the bulb out that we have to utilize that space better. Uh, what the, the illustration I showed you was keep the bulb out that's already there, but just make it nice so it's not just concrete with puddles. Um, but also, there is opportunity in between the existing ball belts, like in the middle of the block, to add a small, I don't know if you call them a ball belt there, because it's not happening at the corner, but and you, you would lose a space to do that. However, we're, we're going to be looking at gaining a space around the corner. But that is, you know, something we want to talk to you about in the community. Is this a balance? I mean, what do you want the most? I mean, you, we could leave it the way it is, or we could add some life to it, and then and then enhance parking opportunities on the side streets, which is probably what we would do, or on the private side off the alley. And we, our uh, parking specialists, will be looking at that and uh, be doing an analysis to ensure that you know, it won't cause problems. Uh, sometimes, you know, in Sisters, people enjoy going there. They don't mind walking half a block or a block. And so, you know, that's a trade-off. It's a trade-off that I'm glad you brought that up as part of the discussion. Well, one thing also is important to note is on some of the areas where you can add these, where you can change the bulb out, they're already on the corner anyway. And so it's an area where you can't have parking because of the of the need for clearance on that corner. Uh, I'm, the one that comes to mind the most is uh, is next to All-Star Pizza. There's no curb bulb out there, and we recently had to take those trees out, but you could bump that curb out significantly, have room for a good sized tree, and you wouldn't mm -hmm. lose any parking spaces because they already have, it's already painted red, and you're not allowed to park there anyway. Yeah, that's exactly right. When you look at the plan over there, you'll see that we're doing exactly that. We're adding trees, benches, and you know, a nice environment there. So without uh, touching the ODOT highway at all, you know, there's a great opportunity to make improvements. It's similar to this picture right here. Perhaps this isn't in regards to um, the street gaping. But one thing I think about with bringing people into town, which we really want, that we have no public restrooms downtown and the main core of downtown and if we have pocket gardens and gathering sites we really need restrooms very good suggestion and uh, you know uh, that that might go with the gathering space you know the, the public plaza we're talking about that would be the natural location to uh, site that uh, so, yes sir do we have a little time to Besides our thoughts and get them to you. Yes. Um, there is, uh, Leg, you want to mention how so, that's going to happen? So, we're already, because there are folks uh, not here that are watching this, and we want to make sure we got their input as well, we are going to be able to collect, be collecting information through Facebook and through our city website to, um, to kind of get people's thoughts on these various things. And if you're, if those, avenues aren't comfortable for you, you're welcome to just email me directly your comments and I'll make sure they get through. Well, I sense a general reluctance in our community to become a theme town. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be a nice town, but not necessarily a theme town. We're not going to try to reproduce sisters again. Uh, 
I had recently acquired the old hometown drugstore. And knowing that we can't compete with Safeway and the dollar stores and buy more, uh, my thinking is to kind of perpetuate in the 1000 block an old town thing. And I think there's a lot of potential there. Okay. For ambience and atmosphere. That's great. Great to hear. And Blair's already heard me before, but if you want to all go on the internet and look up the revitalization of Brownsville, Texas, and see what they've done with alleys, it's very intriguing. A lot of potential there with, that, with these alleys. And um, thank you for that. Uh, I've just, I've seen, I've been in on a few of these in the past. Uh, historical relays and things like that, where they've done the bold outs and things like that. My biggest concern is that usually they're constructed improperly to where the bulb out exceeds 80% of a parked car's width, to where that bulb out actually protrudes into the, into the lane of traffic. If, if when thinking about it in your future designs, you could keep that distance 80% of the width of a car so that someone could walk out to the end of it, still be protected by a parked car, be able to see both ways as far as line of sight, and you're not cutting down, you know, your traffic flow, your your lane of traffic, and things like that. I've got some other questions too, as to, as far as why 13th Avenue, why not some other streets? Mm -hmm. But um, I'm also with the parking issue. I don't personally own any property downtown, but we have limited parking. It's hard to park down there because there are people are going fast. You talk about maybe losing a space with the bulb out in the middle, or for lack of a better term, a bulb out for furniture. Yet you say we're going to gain a space around the corner. You can't gain a space around the corner because there's only so many spaces. And the last thing, God forbid, we do is repaint our parking spots to fit Priuses <laughs> and not trucks. Right. Because there are more log trucks than Lexuses in this town. Oh, yeah. And that has to be remembered. And there's nothing against you coming from Eugene and everything like that. But <laughs> we don't have smaller cars. We have larger cars. And we've had a thing where they got painted and they had to be repainted because nobody could park in them. So it's just something going forward. Don't say that, you know, mathematically we can fit eight spaces here. No, you need, you need to fit six. You need to make it. We're, we're not the big city landscape architects. We do no. Palomath, Jervis. This this is our comfort level. I know. Yeah. That's why we have the, the lane widths, parking lanes, you know, nine foot instead of eight foot. And right. so, yeah, we, I know there's pickup trucks. There's, yeah, pickup um, trucks with wing mirrors and tow mirrors. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm the with... occasional log truck that didn't get all the branches off the tree. Right. So, yeah, this isn't Portland here. No. Okay. So there are, there are some things to consider. Um, I would love to be able to submit, and I'm sure we can, you know, in written form, you know, a list of things that, that might be worth it. And I, we can discuss them during the open house portion. Yeah, and I would like to hear from you more about that 80% uh, of the bulb. Yeah. Now. We can talk about that later. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, I agree that we are a city that is full of log trucks or pickups that are pulling RVs and um, I think the biggest problem with Highway 20 is the speed, which mm -hmm. I realize nobody takes responsibility for because it's real easy to say oh, it's a highway. It's, it's ODOT. It's not us. But the fact is, I wouldn't be on a bicycle on Highway 20 in Sweet Home. It's, it's, it's just too fast. Right. And, and they are allowed to travel too fast. Um, 13, I'm wondering, what about the fire hall and the EMTs and everybody that's on the past 13 and as far as making a corner or if there's a fire truck getting out and maybe making it to the highway i'm not sure what path they take but maybe they like long street because it's wider and if you were you know heading east or west you've got a good path to go without a lot of bulb outs or um you've got a good path if no you're moving I, I, fast. Um, so that, that, that's I a really good with point. the restrooms. I think any town that is worth its weight in gold has public restrooms, which creates a problem to have to clean them. Um, I think the lighting down the center of mm -hmm. Highway 20 is kind of pathetic. Uh, it's not all working, and it's not just the one 
set of lights. It's numerous lights uh, this morning that are some are on, some are not on. And for some reason, it doesn't raise to the top of the priority. And if you've got crosswalks crossing Highway 20, you would think that it would be important <clears throat> for them to be well lit. Um, so we can, you know, we can come with a lot of ideas that would be festive and, but you need safety and you need sanitary options. And uh, they need to be, a, they need to be a higher priority, I guess. Absolutely. And benches would be great. I'm for benches in places. And it's good to remember that benches with arms do allow elderly people the ability to help them up rather than the flat benches, which flat benches are nice too. But, but for people who need a little bit of extra, who haven't been at this deal, <laughs> you know, it's good to lean on something and, and get up. And there, there, you'll notice okay. that every one we showed had a back and a and an armrest. Yeah. And and concerning your your thoughts on um, emergency vehicles, mm -hmm. we engaged the fire department and the school bus routes to ensure that where they go, there's a radius to accommodate them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the kind of thing we pay attention to. So that, that's a good good point. Thank you. I can respond to both of those situations. We're working on a LED light situation right now for the PPNL lights. Okay. okay. I'm trying to get some grant money for that. And as a volunteer firefighter, 90% of the fire calls are off of Main Street. Sometimes they go down Long Street, not often, not, not as often as it is in some places close by us. But, you know, so, so those are, no matter where you're at, it's tough to get that that uh, truck out, yeah, okay. it's long. Uh, and it's not it's not <laughs> unique to our city, I mean, our uh, city, it's everywhere. But the, the engines don't have a problem with that. You okay. know, uh, the problem with it is the traffic and people that don't get over, that's the biggest problem for the fire part of it. But uh, all, most of our calls, probably five to one, 10 to one maybe, are ambulance calls. So we don't have as many times to have to get that engine or the truck out on the on the road. And they do use Long Street. We used it the other day because traffic was crazy. Yeah. But uh, and then the lighting thing. I don't know if you're talking about the PPNL lights. Is that which one you're talking about? One's right down the center meridian. They look really nice, but they don't work. And yeah. and uh, what what good is that? Is kind of yeah. And they haven't worked for quite a while. And I saw them all on the end of the day when I came through. No, oh, half the lights work half the time. What's that? Half the lights work half the time. I do, I saw them all on, but I, I could. Yeah. Um, my, my they're they're half out when I drove in this, <laughs> this and, evening. And some of them are rather dim, and to where LED is a good. That sounds good yeah. because we all know. Well, the ones we were I was just talking about were the power lights, not yeah. the street lights. Well, one thing to keep in mind with the median lights is that when it comes to making the pedestrians pedestrians feel more comfortable. Median is not where you want those lights yeah, anyway. Yeah. Right. The, the median lights, I mean, they're decorative and they look nice, uh, but really the only thing they're good for is lighting up landscaping. Um, so yeah, we would like them to look like they're good in good repair, but let's get some lighting that actually helps people walk around. Yeah, and one thing you find yeah. out, the challenge is without doing a little bulb out here and there for, for light, because that's where you would put the lights. Because as you can see, you know, even in that sketch, there's a lot of awnings that go out from the buildings. Mm -hmm. And you can't do lights or trees because the sidewalks are too narrow and they would conflict with the awnings and in the building itself. So it, it's a balancing act that we're going to try to you know, come to the best solution with. I personally like the 13th Avenue because it is very wide and I like your ideas and your suggestions. And Long Street, Councilor Trask, can a fire truck get down 22 feet because he's proposing? Travel lanes being 11 feet. We can, we can get the truck down on Long Street, feet. not a problem. I appreciated how you extend, you expanded the parking area to be eight and a half feet on either side, but then Long Street is quite, quite narrow, and I think it could really benefit All Star Pizza, Mr. Lucky's Deli, to have some possibility of outdoor eating area yeah. on an expanded side. And, and, and future, you know, we really want to look into the future, and you know, with that type of infrastructure in place, it would be a more attractive. Uh, location for economic development of those vacant lots. 
Okay. Absolutely. And, and Susan, uh, uh, did I call you Susan now? We're out of yeah, the <laughs> The fire engine in the truck, we don't necessarily stay outside of that wide in the middle line. So that's people wide. Yeah, that's yeah. why people hold. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's more so like we take it. what we need. Yes, <laughs> yeah, those don't get your way. <laughs> that's off the record. Nobody say that. Yeah. <laughs> the 11, 11 feet is, you know, that's state highway width. So um, it should, should be just fine for emergency vehicles. And I have to agree with you. Speeding on Main Street is horrible but we're i think jeff lynn our chief is addressing that and if you notice down from down the street there's been a lot more police stopping cars and that was a directive from I won't mention any names but we also got speed lights speed control um coming coming yeah now one thing i that you just put in there a little diagram I, I, is the crosswalk. I know it's like a state road or what the county, whatever you call it. I went to them about five years ago. We put in crosswalks, you know, the blink lights, they're yeah. LED, they're, they're uh, uh, what's so, the name of so flash. Whatever. And so yeah. they, they, they slow down traffic. The one thing when I talked to the state, because I went out there, they said they will never put it in there because it will slow the traffic down. Oh. And, that might uh, be the reason to put them up. Yeah, well, and then I said, well, I mean, because I'm thinking about the one next to the theater, because people do park across the street and, and it's dark there. That's one of the lights that don't work, by the way. It, that hasn't worked for six months. So don't tell me it works, Kate. Okay. I thought uh, so. <laughs> but, <I'm not> uh, <laughs> but there's a crosswalk there, so there should be light and there should be blinking lights when somebody hits that button. Just blink. What? I thought it would be, what, you look at $10,000, $20,000. They And I offered to pay it. They said no. It's about a hundred thousand dollars. We for we, we have it, it's ridiculous. I, it's just something that you should fight. I don't want to say fight, but the state should say no. Let, let's force it. Let's force their hands. Say we want. There should be three in this town. We I agree. Yeah. Theater and we're totally in agreement with you. The problem is, is we're nonstop battling ODOT, and ODOT absolutely bucks us every time we come in trying to put new stoplights in. Or we put speed lights in, or do anything. They, we hear no. And do we put our energy in? Probably we probably, we put, try to put yes, but we yeah, have the ultimate say. And it's went, it's yeah. about. We went two years to get these speed light signs in. Two years. So it's a process. And they'll be out here, right? They're not going to be downtown. They're going to be out closer to this. We're facility. trying. We're just, for example, we're just trying to put sidewalks from Shea Point in down into Foster. <laughs> I'm on year nine right now. Just to get that accomplished. And, and to your answer, that's cor that's correct. But public works is going to move those around somewhat. But apparently they're pretty heavy and they're hard to get up and down. So we, we've got um, we have been issued finally finally permits from ODOT uh, to place those those electronic signs in sections of Highway 20, and there'll be three zones. If you notice, there's a 25 mile an hour zone, there's a 35 mile an hour zone and a 45 mile an hour zone. Each one of those zones has a specific uh, now approved location that we can put those devices. And so we will have at times up to two in each direction in those zones. So I really do like your wooden light posts, except for what's the lifespan of that wood. Yeah. We live in a very wet area. And I don't want to be replacing them before we get them all in. So <laughs> if we decide on that, we'll look into the warranty and all that. They're they're made for the long term. They're not, you know, just milled locally or anything. They're kind of manufactured and passing all these tests and everything. But that's a good point. If that is a consideration, if that's the preference, we would need to make sure that they're durable in the long term. Okay, and then my second question. Um I had shared with council before, I had recently been in Sheridan, Wyoming. And as I'm sitting there, I noticed that all of the green spaces are burned. And it elevated the greenery and it just made it feel rich and you just wanted to stay there. And I started thinking about a lot of the higher end communities. It's dirt that makes that difference. That's it. And we got lots of dirt. So when you're looking at these proposals, are they going to be flat? Are they going to be raised? What what does that look like for landscaping? You're talking that about that does the, make a difference for me. You're talking about the planters. 
Um, yeah, where your little bulb outs and they're green. Oh, it could be either. Yeah. Could be if you'd like the idea of raised planters, please make a suggestion of that. I don't mean they they weren't sided. It was just oh mounted burnt. a little bit. Yeah, oh, and, yeah. And we, I mean it was this much makes a huge difference on those sidewalk green spaces. It was beautiful. And yeah. I started watching and your nicer communities have more dirt. Yeah, we we always like the idea of crowning it or mounding it. Not too much for the roads or causes a maintenance issue, but uh, you know it's better for drainage and it's better for plant health in the long term. Yeah, absolutely, that's, that's important. Uh, yes, sir. If we were to make alleys more pedestrian friendly, just a thought. There's a twelfth street. Up and down the alley next to Chewy's Tavern, or the wrong that's going to last. I don't know. I hate speed bump. It's a raised pedestrian lane across there. It would certainly slow traffic and be aesthetic. That's a really good point. Yeah, it's always a good idea to place a higher importance on people than cars in a situation like that. So. Uh, yes, I, I agree. And then we also want to make sure everything is ADA compliant and, and, and safe. I have another question back to ODOT. Why is it that ODOT can be so disrespectful to a city? What, have, what has happened here or how do we go about uh, not requiring but speaking to them and saying this is a real need? I mean, you look at Gaston out in on 47. I mean, they have a speed limit that's observed and it's really, really small, like what three blocks long, very small. But what is the what would be the answer to getting around ODOT ignoring the fact that this city, which is growing, you can't can't find a house. Mm -hmm. What do you have to do to make them just say we realize that this city needs more attention right now. We all talk about where we, we hope for infrastructure and maybe there's, maybe this is the time. Maybe this is the time for the city to speak up and say, it's a reality and we need it. And if we are really looking at trying to become friendlier and you know maybe more pedestrian friendly, something's gotta be done about the highway and the crossings and, um, I, I fear every time somebody starts to cross the highway, I watch, and you probably do too when you can. You hope that the second lane will stop. You know, you hope that the third lane after they get to the meridian will stop. So I don't, I just don't know. And I've never really been one to um, pursue things like that other than call an ODOT, but there's gotta be a way as a group or the council that calls that be safe. I would, I, would, I would comment on that one. If you ask Blair how much of a pain in the neck it is to deal with ODOT or the mayor or this whole council that's been on her for a few years, it is not easy. But why? But because well, it's ODOT. Yeah, yeah we, we've had in uh, you know, other places, and you know, we're doing this in Paloma, Florence, you know, on the state highways, it's really important to have a good relationship with your district ODOT manager, find out who that is. And maybe this is an opportune time once we're finishing up with this conceptual design to engage them, plant the seed of knowing that, you know, there's real safety concerns here and here's here's some suggestions that we're proposing and try to engage them. Like have them cross the street or invite <laughs> yeah. them for lunch at one of your proposed parks and say, let's just walk across. and. See how it feels. I I sometimes think that people that set in these offices that that have this power, they are not paying attention to what the average person wants. Somebody in a wheelchair. There's a man out there in a wheelchair with a dog. Good luck trying to cross the street. That's know? always a challenge. You're absolutely yeah. right. So uh, we address this all the time. So if I may, the mayor appointed me to the transportation committee and the Department of Transportation sits on that committee. And so I'm hoping to be able to bring some of the concerns to that. Um, I guess it would be section of the state with our concerns in this town. So 
I don't know how successful I'll be because like they said, it's very difficult, but if you wanna give me some of your concerns, I'd be happy to speak to the ODOT lady on that panel about them. Just today, I, I stopped at the crosswalk right in front of A&W and two bicyclists and another lady were crossing and the car next to me, next to the median, never even saw them whatsoever. And I just blared on my horn for like 10 seconds until they finally realized that they almost hit those people. And it is a, a real safety concern, especially when people are getting killed out there at that crosswalk at the Bymark crossing area. So it's very important to me and the council and, and I hope to be able to speak to the ODOT liaison on that transportation committee and maybe like fire if we could. ODOT doesn't see any justification for additional stoplights. And we for years trained for Pleasant Valley Road there. That's just an example. And a few other cross streets. And they just absolutely said there's no justification. So if, if I can just interject, we do have we have somebody on the on teams at home that has is keeps on raising their hand. I just want to make sure that they're not seeing the, the chat messages apparently. If you have if you're listening at home. Please type into the chat uh, section any question you might have or concern, and we will try to get that addressed. But we're not able to take those uh, over the speaker at this time. But I think we probably need to get wrapped up and start the open house portion. Yeah, this would probably be a good time to do that. Luzanne, do you want to explain um, the opportunities that you have um, you know, while you're here at the open house to provide uh, feedback to us? Yeah, so basically we have boards going all along here and out in the corridor. So if you'd like to just go and have a look, um, on the back desk there, there's paper and pens to write comments. You can just put them um, into the see-through um, holder there. There's posted sticky notes that you could take if you like something or if you have a comment about something. Just put it directly on any of the boards that you see. And in addition to that, there's also just dots and those would be really good for the furniture and the lighting boards. If you could just put the dots on the ones that you prefer, like the group you prefer or the light you prefer, just to so we can get a feel for what direction the community um, would like us to go. And, and yeah, just if you have any questions, David and myself will be here. Please feel free to ask us anything you like. And yeah. So we don't want to talk about no dot anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We're better off of ODOT. We don't either. Yeah, we, 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 we can sympathize All with right. that. So folks at home, I'm going to show you some uh, some of the pictures as well while everybody else wanders around. And um, and we can try and get some of the questions addressed uh, while I'm actually, I got nothing to do. I can stay here with you guys and yeah. show you pictures. So let me just, uh, just give you a minute and I will get some of the plans for you to see at home. Anything comes up that you want me to address. Okay. Yeah, I will. All right. Hopefully, folks at home can hear me. I'm going to switch the camera to a different one. Hey, there you are, or there I am. So uh, let me find my folder here. If you guys, and feel free to uh, type in any questions. If you don't know how to get to the chat function, take a look on your screen. You should see an icon that ha looks like a uh, that looks like a uh, like a thought bubble, like a, a like a comic strip bubble. And uh, click on that, and there's a place for you to chat to me. Um, let me. I want to make sure you're not hearing too much from the crowd here. And um, let's see here. All right, let me find my pictures here. Uh, 
Because I would have forgot, you know, people are still listening to me. That's okay. Okay. It's okay. All right. So, folks, here is this is kind of one of the overview plans that they have. Um, this kind of zoom in of Main Street. And so here, one of the things they pointed out was this empty lot right here has a major opportunity for either building infill or something to add interest. And then um, they have this area right here on the corner of where Sunshine Espresso is, they have that labeled as a possible gathering space. Um, and again, this is just a proposal. We, we understand that that's private property, but I guess one possibility is, you know, if there could be a switch made maybe between these two locations, you could have an easier right turn in uh, to this lot for a coffee uh, drive through place and they could exit out the alley. Um, and, you know, so maybe some sort of swap could be made that would enable something like that to happen. But we're just kind of, kind of uh, everything is on the table when it comes to meeting the goals of, of making downtown a, a, a more comfortable place for everybody. And then uh, this is that pocket park between the news, uh, possibility of a pocket park between the, the newspaper and Figaro's Pizza. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of, uh, you can see the trees that they're looking at adding. Uh, some of this would require like these, some of these curb bump outs that we're talking about. And I think the intent is to look for places where there's not really parking uh, much, par uh, where, where there's not any parking that you would be losing. So um, we'll see. It looks like I have a qu question here. Um, one of the questions is, are you aware of OLCC requirements for bars and taverns offering outdoor seating areas? I understand this is preliminary, but why set up public for ideas that don't have a chance? Kind of my same thought regarding ODOT. Uh, I think that's a good point. Yes, there are requirements um, for bars and taverns. Uh, yes, there's outdoor seating areas, but, but there's plenty of other cities that manage to, uh, manage to make things like that work. And so we're trying to make sure that we are open to as many possibilities as we can. Um, and, and there are ways to mitigate some of those things. So we, we'd really like to try to see what we can, what we can get to stick first um, and then narrow down based on uh, state regulations and things like that. So we're not trying to set anybody up for something that can never happen. We're really just trying to get the juices flowing and um, get people thinking about what, what changes and what uh, additions to downtown might be helpful. Um, another comment said, I love the town square idea. My thought is to put it between the library and the old town hall in the parking lot. This is off Main Street, yet close to everything. It would be, bring a lot of people to downtown and enhance business. Yeah, that is the area where the, uh, the farmer's market is now. And certainly that has a, a lot of potential. I think one of, one of the reasons why we would want to consider other options as well would be that it's not visible from Main Street. And if you have something that's more visible from Main Street, it makes it so that passersby are going to say, see something going on and be more likely to stop. That's really where the traffic is in our town. But I think, I mean, all, all options are on the table. I think that's definitely uh, an area that should be considered. Uh, let, me, uh, let me see here about other pictures I can share with you. So let's share another picture here. Um, 
this is kind of the festival street idea and here they have uh, outlined 13, 13th Avenue as a possible location for a festival street. Um, and to a festival street, what it is, is it's, it's basically you're taking a regular street, but you're making changes to it that make it easier to shut down that street to have a festival. And so some of those ways could be removing the curb or, or making it all one elevation or uh, maybe putting bollards uh, or the, the the slots where you can put bollards at the end of the street. So you have, you know, basically a built-in metal receptacle where you can go stick a pole uh, or a series of poles in the ground to block off the street. And they could be decorative so that they look like they were intended to be there. And it's not just, you know, traffic cones or, or something like that. Um, and then you might even have receptacles in the ground that would have water and um, and sewer hookups for vendors or perhaps even uh, you know power there, and um, basically it would be a place that's designed to have foot traffic come in and uh, and vendors come in. So that's uh, as you can see from some of the pictures, they kind of showing you know different festivals and different uses of things like that. But that's a, a very wide area that street that is not very utilized, and so you can still. Um, you know, have it open all the time, except for just on weekends or something like that. And it could be a real asset to the community. Um, I'm, any other comments from, from you folks at home? Uh, uh, it's, I just want to make sure that I'm being heard and, uh, and that I'm providing useful information. So feel free to let me know if there's something you'd like to see or some question that you have but i'll move on to uh, another another image here and as as we mentioned before a lot of these streets we're going to uh, um, we're going to put these images up on our website and up on facebook and um, kind of have some polls out there so that you can kind of uh, indicate your int your interest in some of these ideas. So this is the bigger image of what they showed us with the uh, with Long Street. Um, they're seeing some opportunity there because the the current setup is you have these 14 foot travel lanes and uh, and they actually don't need to be that big. You could have you could be you could be fine with 11 foot travel lanes and that would allow you to expand the parking, uh, make the parking area wider, but also you could make the sidewalks wider. And more room for pedestrians means also more room for landscaping, means more room for street lighting. It means more room for um, outdoor seating for at, at cafes and things like that. So this is a real uh, opportunity in that area to, to move things out. Um, one thing I'll point out also is you can see the picture at the top there that's All-Star Pizza. Looks like that was taken before the trees were taken out, but um, that uh, corner is just a straight corner. It doesn't have the uh, any kind of bulb out or curb extension or anything like that, but um, but you, could, you can see that the curb is painted yellow. There's no parking allowed there, and so you could actually bump that out and um, have more room for outdoor seating for the cafe and all and landscaping things like that and you wouldn't even lose a parking spot because you can't park there anyway so it's one of those low-hanging fruit easy uh, easy changes looks like we might have a question here um, question or the comment is I love the lighting options that incorporates our timber heritage yeah I think that's great too I, I really like that and that, that's one of those when they presented that picture I thought you know that looks awesome. I really love that. Um, I wish, I, I wonder about, I of course immediately thought about my uh, wooden fence and the wooden posts that are rotting and had to be removed so that I could have a functioning fence. You know, whether our weather is not kind to wood over time. But, uh, you know, maybe the manufacturing process has addressed that. Maybe there's a, a, if there's a warranty for a certain amount of time on that pole, um, it might be uh, a good idea to go for something like that anyway and uh, and just recognize that we have it for a certain number of years and at that it, you know we may need to, to replace the foal at some point but um, yeah I think it looks really cool let me pull up another picture 
Oh, speaking of lighting, here are those lighting options again. So uh, they highlighted some existing lighting that they have at, uh, at the theater. Um, and uh, at, at the Rio, they have those lights that, that uh, the Rio put up, um, which look great. And so if we, we could try to continue that theme. Um, but it's, it's nice to have uh, poles on those that allow you to hang flower baskets and, and put banners up and things like that. It really makes the downtown feel great. Um, one thing to think about is what kind of, are, are you concerned at all about light pollution? Are you concerned about lights shining up and out? Or are you more interested in just lights that shine down? Um, when, we, when we look at a downtown area for walking around, lights that just shine down are beneficial because that's really what we want to focus our lighting on. And, um, but, you know, some people like the look of lights that shine out. Uh, as well. So, you know, that's something we want to hear from you about too. But um, then again, you can you can see these timber lights, as was mentioned, and then these more modern fixtures. It's really, you know, what, what kind of town, what kind of image do we want to portray in our downtown? What's the, what is the feel of Sweet Home is really what we're, what we're looking for. All right. And, uh, I'm going to keep on cycling through pictures here, and if you have any other questions, uh, certainly uh, type them at me uh, through the chat function. Here we have various, uh, he showed this in the presentation, well, all these were shown in the presentation, but here we have some street furniture ideas and what, uh, you know, different styles that we could be considering. Um, we do want to increase the, the number of benches that we have in the downtown, make sure that we have places for people to to relax and enjoy their time, um, because that's, you know, that's really what we, uh, you know, we want to promote the time spent there. Because the more time people spend there, the more they patronize businesses. The more those businesses can thrive, the more other businesses come in. Um, it's all part of having kind of a vibrant downtown. Um, and of course, trash rece trash receptacles are going to be hugely important. We want to make sure we have those regularly accessible. Uh, make sure people have opportunities to throw away those food containers from this, the restaurants that we want them to patronize there, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, same thing with with uh, with the bicycle racks and things like that. Uh, we want to promote that connectivity. So if you have any preferences when it comes to these or things that you think look nicer or just a general, uh, a general image that you think portrays our community better, um, that's really what we'd love to to know and the feedback we'd love to hear. So here's some uh, a sketch that they put up. Um, you can see kind of some possibilities here. It, you know, some of the things that you can do with these curb bump bulb outs, like for instance, this is this is existing situation here um, across from, uh, well, shoot, that's right by Steelhead, yeah. Um, and so you've got kind of this planter box already existing and a sidewalk on both sides of it, but you don't need that sidewalk on both sides because nobody's allowed to park there anyway. It's already got a, a yellow painted curb. So why not uh, add, uh, take away some of that sidewalk and add more uh, plants, add more landscaping, Get some bench activity going on there, and maybe even some public art. Have a sculpture there. There's there's room at that location for all of those things, and uh, you know we public art is a great way to add appeal to a downtown, but it also is a great way to show the town's character, show what things are valued by our city, and um, and so we really want to hear what 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 is it that you want to convey? What do you want to show about downtown. Uh, one comment, yeah, items with wood portray our community well. Yes, I, I agree. Okay, here's a, this is the shot they showed of that uh, existing uh, open space next to the newspaper. Um, but, uh, you know, there might be some possibilities of, of expanding that and, and 
um, put some benches and tables in there and open it up and um, and allow that to be a connection between Long Street and Main Street, but also uh, provide some amenities to uh, to restaurants and, and shops and so forth. Uh, it could be pretty flexible. Um, it is a small space, yes, but um, but there's a lot that you can do with it. One of the concerns I know some people have is a Councilor Trask brought it up that you know that fence was put there for a reason because there was uh, undesirable activity going on in that area. And, and that's a shame and that's something we want to avoid and, and we definitely don't want to do things that are going to bring that stuff back to the area, but we, there's other ways to mitigate that. Um, with technology these days, I'm sure we can, you can put cameras just about anywhere uh, and you can, there's, other, there's ways of keeping that space open, but also cracking down on the activity that you don't want to have happen. So we, we want to be open to possibilities. Um, but also, of course, have our eyes open to what could happen, but, uh, but recognize that there might be some creative ways to, uh, to mitigate those problems. All right. Um, I think I'm about at the end of the pictures that I've got. So um, what, uh, oh, that's the presentation. So I'm gonna share these things through Teams, I think I, you can download these uh, directly. Let me uh, stop sharing the screen and see what I can do to, to bring those up, share those with you. So if you're able to access the chat function, I'm just gonna drag these files that we've been looking at uh, right into the chat function and it will, um, present them and you can click on those and download them to your own computer. So feel free to, uh, to access them yourself, to take a look. And um, we will have these up on our website as well and on Facebook, but it's gonna take us a, a couple days to, to get that done. But um, we would love to have your comments on them and we'll have places where you can uh, you can certainly comment through here you can comment through facebook you can email me i'll give you my uh my email address in the in the chat box um and let me know what you think and i'm going to also send you the presentation this is the presentation they gave tonight so there they all are uh hopefully you can find them and let me, I'll type in here my email address too. Feel free to continue with any questions you might have and I will see about addressing those, but I think we're getting to the end here of, uh, of what we can share uh, online. All right, so um, just put that in the chat box. If you have questions or comments uh, after this meeting, um, uh, please feel free to email them to me. You can reach me uh, at B. L A R S E N B Larson at sweethomeor.gov. Just make sure that's Larson with an E, not an O. I don't know who these Larsons with an O that caused me so much trouble are, but um, it really should be spelled with an E. So B Larson, B L A R S E N at sweethomeor.gov. So before I sign off, uh, any other questions or comments that I can address. Feel free to chime in. I hope that you found this enjoyable and that this has been uh, um, interesting to you. I hope that this spurs some lots of ideas and uh, and does lots gets lots of stuff moving for our community. So um, I am happy to address any 
uh, any comments or questions and, and help you out in any way I can. So feel free to email me and, uh, and we'll, we'll chat about it more. But for now, I think we're going to sign off. So thank you very much for your participation tonight. Have a good night.